Alrighty. Maybe the sound works, I don't know. I'm going to import this animation. I don't think there's anything I have to do with it. We'll see. Well, I don't see it. So, what does that mean? It means it's huge. Alright, I want to resize it for us because it's going to be kind of weird looking. Let's... Uh, big creation. And a safe rig. And it's way down there. So let's just resize this. Just get it somewhere. Um, that makes sense. We don't want that. Good. Alright, we got our feet back here. I want that. Alright, so bring it down just to match it. Usually you want to match the pelvis, but matching the shoulders is just fine. Oftentimes, because I don't know which one of these is the pelvis, I'm guessing it's that one. Let's do that anyway. Let's get down there. Alright, we'll call that pelvis. Let's just see what it actually is. I'll go into pose mode. And I'll select that bone. What's the name of it? Hip. That's the pelvis. Since it's called the hip, I'm guessing this is a standard BVH. Let's just load the map for that. Um, and see where we go. So, I'm going to go into the... Um, character tools, retarget motion, and I'm going to delete my old rig, I don't need that anymore, it was just for reference. I'll select this, I want to do uh, BVH, this one here, BVH or CMU or DAS, uh, because Daz, I believe, produ I think that's the reason why I put Daz, is because Daz also produces, or can produce, compatible BVH, apparently. I don't remember putting that there. Let's just see what the animation looks like. Okay. okay. So, uh, how long is that anyway? Like 300 plus frames. Alright, now I loaded a map, um, and the, what the map does is it, it uh, translates the existing rig to the Second Life rig. And you can see the director contains a map. The next step here is to, well, let's get some distance. I'm going to make it like half a meter or so. And you say action, and it will create the uh, the target rig. Now, the configuration of the arms is a little weird. I might want to change that. But let's just see how it plays first. Oops. Yeah, it didn't, uh, it didn't work. The, um... The map does not work for this. That's strange. I'm pretty sure it's the correct one. Alright, let's just make sure. I'm going to remove the... Um, I'm going to reset the mapper here. And I'm going to clean the map, but it didn't work. We can create a map right here. I'll show you how to do that, but... I'm not going to complete it here. What I want to do is complete it in the template creator because that's more fun to use and easier to use. First of all, I want to make sure that uh, there's a. <laughs> I want to make sure that there is a neutral pose for this guy. It looks like this pose is incorrect. So let's see if there's a neutral pose by putting him in pose mode. Selecting all the bones by hitting the A key and Alt R. And there is a neutral pose. Let's freeze that pose. I'm going to embed it directly into the animation that will work for us. Uh, I also want to spread these fingers out a little bit more so that they're compatible with SL. And we're just going to do some guesswork here. You can, you can look at the actual Second Life rig to get a bit of reference, but I'm not going to do that here. You can do that yourself. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup work. It'll work okay. It'll be some funky. You'll see it. You just have to do some testing to figure it out. All right. We're going to say that this is the pose we want. Uh, in order to do that, I need to go into the animation panel. Uh, reference pose features. I will enable this button and say reference from the existing pose and create the reference pose. It will create it on 
frame 1 and 2 here and so it freezes your pose up there. Now when we play it, it comes out of the reference pose, but it goes right back in on frame one. So now we have something to work with. That second life will understand. It's a neutral pose. All right, now for the nitty gritty. First, I'm gonna show you how to map bones in the retargeter. Um, we have to engage it first, and we put this to, I don't know, it's point six six. All right, good. Uh, we will engage it, action. And then we will go into the interactive retargeter. And I'll go into a pose. I'll start mapping bones by clicking the pairs. You don't have to select them. Just click one, click the other, and say, add the bones. Now that bone is mapped. You can see it's moving with the avatar. You can do them in reverse, too. Add the bones. And you can keep going until they're all mapped. Now, uh, easier way to map a rig is to not do this at all. Um, you can do the whole thing there if you want to. I'm going to reset the mapper. Uh, my eyes aren't working too good. Let me see if it works better with my glasses on. Nope. Go into the template creator. Uh, let's go to the first frame. Go into the visual snap mapper. The fun guy here. Uh, and it's already set to 6, we'll say action, it creates a rig, and you'll see that our previous map bones show up, which is nice and convenient. We can do the rest here, say map these bones, okay, we'll just keep doing this uh, where the bones make sense. If you're confused about a bone, don't map it, go up, go into the um, retargeter and see which one moves, and map it there, do some cleanup in there. But we can do most of the work right here, like uh, these ankles. Uh, map these, the toe, I guess, right here. Map these. Yep. Wait a minute. Map, okay. Now the spine, let's count the spine. Uh, I think, yeah, one, two, three, four. And yet yeah, one, two, three. Hmm, one, two, three, four. Four. I think that's going to be the neck, right? I'm going to assume that that's the neck. I'm going to start with the spine, I think. That's the hip, and that's not. That's the groin. That's the pelvis. And that's the pelvis is the hip, so map these bones. The next bone, I don't think we can map it. I think we have to skip it, and that's typical. That's actually typical in a BVH. We'll just skip that one and map these, go to the next one, map these, and then we have a neck bone, and we have the head bone. Map. Okay. So we do the arms too. I'm going to show you a little trick here, I think. Wait, let's see. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's just use, let's use a technique here. I'm going to click the very end bone and follow a chain of four. I can say chain limit one, two, three, four, and I can say fill. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do that to the fingers too. It makes it faster. Fill that. The fingers are three segments. So we're gonna reduce the chain to three. But these are way far out there. Let's move these over. Um, put a move gizmo on there so I can see what I'm doing. Move them over. Now, if we don't lock these bones in place, the ones we moved, they're going to snap. Whatever remains is going to snap right back. So we need to uh, release these bones. Or, or if we don't, I'll show you what happens if we don't. We have a chain of three, I'll say fill, and they snap right back to where they belong. See, we, would, we don't want that. We want to keep working with them visually. In order to keep them in place, we have to say release. So release. All right. Next one's here, fill these, and just on down the line. And unfortunately, there's no uh, synchronous way to do this. And it doesn't make any sense to try. I, I worked for days trying to figure that out. Um, and there's just no logical way to get it done. So I might get back to it and give people some options and really it would just be to let you know that it's not so easy that you know what people think it really is it's not um, fill 
it's not just about naming the bones either. So fill. Because we don't know if the bones are named right. And we might cause more confusion than fix problems. So, and our guy is mapped. Now I can save the map here. I can reset the stage. The map stays with the rig. You can save your Blender file. I, I think I actually will save it uh, just anywhere. Save it. Come on. Um, you also will want to save your map for later use. But remember, it stays with a rig, so we're safe right now. But you can save your map, and it'll save it in a bunch of maps here. And we'll just save it in a temp, in a temp map here. I don't want to type, so I'll just look for my temp map if it's in, if it's in here. Um, PQRST. No, I deleted it, so I'll say temp. T E and P. Yeah, right. There we go. Save that map. Um, it stays with the rig, so we don't have to reload it again. Now, if we go over to the uh, character tools, uh, we retarget mo motion. We already have the map on it. We have our distance. Uh, and this can be anything. This is just for visual effects, so you can get an idea what's going on. Because if you leave it at zero, the rigs will land in the same spot, and it's hard to see what's going on. So I click action, play your animation, and they run together. Now let's assume that uh, the whole animation will play without problems. We go into keep that there, keep that selected. Do not select this guy. This is your export rig. Go into animation. The best way to animate uh, to export an animation is through the anim file format. I am not supporting BVH, although you can so, uh, export BVH. But you'll come back to me and say, well, why is it doing this or that or not something else? And it's because it's BVH. Um, close a reference thing here. Anim export features. Priority, I will set it to three. Uh, I want to loop my animation. You probably don't want to do that. Maybe you do. You can loop it in a script if you want. And I just click export. All the other stuff is set up. Hmm? Uh, animation. Export that. 300 frames. Let's just not move the mouse. There is no errors. Looks good. Okay, I'm gonna upload this. Animation. Play it. There we go. Alright, have fun.